These are my top 10 hidden tricks for your Samsung Galaxy S10. They will also work on other devices that have the One UI update. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. So we're gonna start off talking about wallpapers. No, not those wallpapers. We're gonna do a video lock screen wallpaper. So if you head into the gallery app, when you're at the top of the page, scroll down a little bit more and you'll see this videos section. So this is gonna show you all the videos on your phone. So for a video lock screen, you can choose any video that you have up to 15 seconds long. So we're gonna select this beach wallpaper right here and I'm going to select the menu and then set as wallpaper. And now here it's giving me the option to edit so I could actually shorten the video, but this one is already 15 seconds long, so I'm just gonna select set as wallpaper. So now that we've done that, when we go to our lock screen, you will see that it now begins to play that video, and if I unlock the phone, it just jumps right in. Now a few things to note, you can only set actual videos. You can't set GIF images or anything as the video wallpaper, and then it will only play from the beginning of that video each time you unlock the phone. If you wanna see the full video, you kinda of have to swipe a little bit to be able to see that full video. And then when you let go, it would go into your phone. There is also no way to extend the amount of time that your lock screen is showing. If you want some of the video wallpapers I've used previously, I will leave a link in the description below. Now moving on to number two, here we're gonna go into the quick settings and here we have flashlight. So if you tap on the text of flashlight, here you have the option to adjust the brightness of the flashlight. So let's turn it on. And then here we can actually adjust the intensity. So we can go to a level five or down to a level one. You can't see it that much, but there you have that quick brightness option. So that's really handy to have um, in many different situations. And there we can select done and turn on and off the flashlight right there. That's number two. Now next we're gonna head into the camera and I'm gonna show you how to do a floating camera icon. So right now, if I'm trying to take a picture, you have the camera shutter button, but if you grab that shutter button, you can actually remove it and place it anywhere on the screen so it's easier for you to reach. Now, if you're taking a selfie and you wanna quickly do a selfie, all you need to do is place your hand over the screen and it will start a two second timer. So there you can see when it sees my palm, it then begins a timer. So that's really nice to be able to take your selfies. Now let's head into the recent apps menu. So on any of these applications, you just need to tap the app icon. And then this gives you a bunch of options. So the multi-window is still available in the One UI, but it's just available right here in open in split screen view. So when you tap that, it's gonna hide that app and then ask you to open another application. So it's gonna choose ones that you already have open, or you'll see a little icon down in the bottom corner to be able to open up another application. So here we could select one that's popping up right there, and we have both of those apps open at once. Now before, you could tap right here to be able to save those two apps at once, but now that option to pair apps together is only available on the Edge panel. If you go into the Apps section, we select New, and then here you have Create App Pair, and then here you could pair two different applications together, switch which is on the top or the bottom, and select Done and those will show up on the Edge panel. There is no way to add them to the home page anymore. Now next, let's bring in a friend and we're gonna show you how to share large files to other Samsung devices quickly. So here on my Galaxy S10, I have a large video file that I wanna move over here to my S10e. So I'm gonna go back into the gallery, pull down, go to videos, and then I'm gonna find the video that I want to transfer and then I'm going to long press on that video and hit share. And then you will see two options that you may have seen before. One is called send to device and one is called Wi-Fi direct. Now I'm gonna show you how to do both. So first you're gonna select send to device. So then on the other phone, you're actually gonna go into the quick panel settings and go to smart view. So when you open up smart view, it's gonna do two things. One, it's gonna search for a device to cast or mirror the screen to, but then down here, it's going to have another device send something to this phone. So then here, you saw that the S10e showed up, so we're gonna select S10e, and now it asks if you want to accept that Wi-Fi transfer. 
So I accept the Wi-Fi transfer and here it is sending over that video file. So here you can see it's downloading right there. And here we can see that the file is 977 meg. And just like that, after just a few seconds, it has now fully transferred over here to the phone and I can open up that video right in the video player. So now we have the full video there. So another way to be able to do that is if we go back into the gallery and let's say we select multiple files that we want. So I'm just gonna drag and select all these. I'm gonna hit share and then I'm gonna choose Wi-Fi direct. So if your device doesn't have sent device, you may want to choose Wi-Fi direct and instead of going into smart play, you go into the Wi-Fi settings and hit Wi-Fi direct right here at the top. You do need to make sure Wi-Fi is on and then it becomes an available device to see to the other phone. And then here I'm gonna select tech with Brett and it's going to send all of those files over to this other phone. And there you can see it quickly sent all 26 files over here to the S10e without any issues. So that is how you send large files from your Samsung phone to another Samsung phone. You could also do this between tablets. So for number six, we have tips on organizing your home screen and removing applications. So if you select one app and then select select items, you can choose multiple applications at one time. Then you can hold down and drag those to another page or drop them there and it will reorganize them. Now, when you do that again, another option that you can have is the uninstall right here at the top. So if you want to uninstall multiple apps or remove them from your home screen or add them into a folder, you can do all that just by selecting multiple items at once. Now for number seven, I wanna talk about the always on display. So if we go into the quick panels right here and then we go into the always on display, you'll see it right here. You now have a few different options. So Previously, it would always show the always on display, but now you have an option where the screen is locked. You can tap to show the always on display. Here you could actually show the always on display at all times, or you can have the always on display show as scheduled. So let's go in and show a little bit more details. So right under the details, you'll see always on display. So then in the always on display down here, you have those options for the display mode and you now have a new option to go from portrait into landscape. So I know a lot of people have asked for that as well. So we're gonna keep it at tap to show, lock the screen. So if I want to see the time or my notifications, I just need to tap the screen once and there it will show up for 30 seconds. Now, if you want to increase the brightness, just double tap on the always on display. So here it is set to auto, but then you could move it up or down depending on your preference. And here you can quickly change it to landscape mode. So then if we want to get in the phone, we double tap and we can unlock it that way. Tip number eight is pin windows. Now this is super handy if you hand your phone to somebody and you don't want them to leave the application that you're showing them. So if we go into the settings here and then we go down to biometrics and security, and then we're going to go into other security settings and then right down here, you have the pin windows option. So you can turn that on and off. So here in pin windows, it explains how to get it set up. Turn on pin windows, open the app, press the recent apps button, tap the icon above the app and then select pin windows. And then here you have the option to enter pin before you leave the app for extra security. So let me show you how that works. So let's say I open an application that I want my kid to play in. I would then go to the recent apps menu right here. I then select the app icon and then I choose pin this app. So then I hit okay and now the app is pinned. So that means that if you press home, back or the recent apps menu, it is not going to leave the application. So they can use anything in this app, they just can't leave it and mess up the rest of my phone. And then to get out of the app, you will hold down the recent apps button and the back button at the same time for a second and then it will unlock the app and you can go home as normal. Now the next tip kind of enhances what you would do with pin windows where you can actually lock out the entire screen so it can't be touched at all. So for this, we're gonna go into the settings of the phone. We're gonna go down and find accessibility, go into interaction and dexterity, and then here you have interaction control. So when you turn on interaction control, it is enabled by pressing the volume up and the power key at the same time, but it will actually lock out the entire screen of the phone and you can set certain parts of the screen 
to be muted. So let's say you hand your phone to somebody and you are looking at a picture, but you don't want them to look at any other picture or touch any other part of the phone. So then here, if we hold down volume up and power at the same time, it is then going to turn on these features and it will disable one-handed mode and pin windows, but that is okay. So now it is asking where we want to block the phone out. So right now the entire screen is being blocked. If I only want a certain part of the screen to be blocked, I can draw a box like that. So some apps have ads that I don't want my kids to touch. I can do that. And then I can also set a second box option as well. And then here in the options, you can actually make it so that there is a power key that they can't touch. They can also not touch the volume or the keyboard. So, and then here you have time limits. So you could turn off the interaction control after a certain amount of time, but we don't want to enable that. So now we're gonna go back and we are going to block the whole screen for this and select done. So now the interaction control is enabled, you can see that none of the screen I can use. And you'll see the slight blue box around the outside edge, meaning that I can't use the phone. So now if I'm done letting my kid look at the video or whatever it is, I can then unlock it by holding down the volume up and the power key at the same time and their interaction control is deactivated. So it's not as locked down as using like a pattern to unlock it, but it's just nice if you're handing your phone over to somebody, you don't want them scrolling through your gallery, you lock it, they're not sure how to unlock it. Um, and so it makes it really easy for you to be able to do that. Now the next hidden feature is gesture control. So to turn this on, go into the settings of the phone, go into the display settings, and then go down here and find navigation bar and then here you can change from the navigation buttons to what you are probably using to full screen gestures. Now, right now I have the hints turned on so you'll see these slight little bars or you can turn those off so there's nothing on the screen at all. So it looks really nice from the home screen, no buttons down here. So there is no longer an option to hide the navigation bar. So this is the best way to do that. Now, after using this for a while, it is very handy to have. Um, when I went to one of my phones that didn't have it enabled, I found that it was very unfriendly to use. So is how this works is whenever you want to use any of those buttons at the bottom, you just swipe up. So if I want to go to the recent app, I can do that if I swipe home, swipe up, swipe back. So this is a very fluid motion to you. So if you're in an app, you wanna go home, you swipe up. Again, you wanna go back or you wanna pull up the recent apps menu. It's very fluid and simple to use. So I've really enjoyed having the gesture controls. The only problem is if my phone is resting down on something like a treadmill, it is sometimes hard to hit those buttons. But I have really enjoyed and highly recommend using gesture controls. For my 10th hidden tip on the Samsung Galaxy S10, we need to create a GIF. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into YouTube and then I'm going to open up my edge panel and I'm going to go into the smart select and choose GIF. So then I'm gonna align it with my YouTube video here in the background. And then you can keep it high quality or you could choose it to standard quality. I'm going to select play and then hit record. Okay, I have my GIF recorded, and then it's going to play that GIF for you over and over. So I can save it, share it, or hit the edit icon right here. So you just want to save the GIF once you have created it. Once you have done that, go into your gallery and go into the GIF option there. So at the beginning of this GIF, you saw the little play button and I wanna remove that. So now we can click the little edit icon right here and you have a full GIF editor available. So this is really cool. There are quite a few options. So down here, you can actually see the GIF frame by frame. So if you can see that at the bottom, it is showing every single frame. So I can go to the beginning of this and delete those frames that I don't want to see. I could even select the plus and add more frames if I want to. Now the next option is I could crop the ratio of the GIF. So if I wanna change how it looks, so let's make it a one by one and we could move it over just a little bit. The next option is I can increase or decrease the speed. So here we could increase how fast the GIF is playing. And then next we have the option to play the GIF in reverse. We can have it go forward or we can have it loop backward and forward. 
So let's make it go backward. And then the last option here is you can actually add items on to the GIF. So here you have stickers, so you could go in here and add different little images that you have. There's all kinds of stickers that are available. Um, but we wanna go back and you now have the option to do text. Previously, you could only draw on these GIF images, but now you can actually do text. So then you would come in here and you wanna choose the style, and then you can choose left, center, or right, and then you can choose with a box. So then you are able to meme your GIF. So let's put that there, you can move it around. And then if you wanna do another one, text, says, sorry, perfect. And you can increase the size by going like that. I wish it would stay level and then you would have another bar to rotate it, but that's just kind of how it is. So there you go. Thanos says, sorry. So when you're all done, click the box right there. And now you have your own GIF that you have created all on your Samsung Galaxy S10. So there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a few tips and tricks on the way. If this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribe and to see all of my other videos all about the Galaxy S10, make sure you select the playlist down there on the bottom or the next video on the side. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.